What's up, everybody? Welcome to the House of Sid, where we review toys like it's our job. Today, we've got the Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Cheetor. And first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at that packaging. Bring that in, get a good look at it. So right here at the top, we have Cheetor, Scar Tomy, got some good art there in the front. Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron. Got some art on the side. On the back, we have our product shots. Cheetor, 20 steps. Got all of our warnings down here. Got the sad baby on the side. Got some good art of Cheetor in his robot mode. He is a deluxe class and excellent. This is recyclable. There's the top. Do you have WFC K4 War for Cybertron fourth figure in this line? Here's the bottom. In case anybody wants to read all of that good stuff. All right, let's put this packaging off to the side. Let's get to the main event here. Bring him back in. Let's talk about what was inside the package. We will start with the most useless piece of paper that comes with these toys. Bye. Next, this is the insert that was inside the box, figure sat in. So there's nothing amazing here, nothing too surprising. We do get a sticker, like we get with the, the other Kingdom figures. In this case, I got the Dinobot sticker. And, as always, you get the instructions. As I've said before, illustrations are good, clear, concise, pretty easy to follow. All right, let's take a look at Mr. Cheetor here. First things first, we will remove his tail whip. This is the only accessory that comes with him, by the way. So, bring that in and get a little bit of detail on there. Overall, not too bad. They did a good job with the paint apps on this figure, for sure. We'll see this again, of course, in robot mode, as this does make up his tail. Yes, I know it's parts forming, but that's all right. All right, let's bring in Mr. Cheetor for his close-up. So there's that head sculpt. Good paint apps. Again, really good job with getting the insignias on. Face sculpt looks good. Nicely detailed red eyes. Get a big old chest cheetah right there. Come down a little bit further. Good detail on the crotch area. Get the upper legs, lower legs. All things being equal, I mean, I think this all flows together really well. There he is from the side. And yes, he does look like he's carrying around half of a cheetah on his back, or at least the legs of a cheetah, because, well, he is. And for the size of figure he is, he's got little old feet on him. There he is from the back. So can you see, pretty good paint apps. Full disclosure, as I've noted in other Kingdom reviews, I never had any collections of Beast Wars uh, when they first came out, so I can't really give you a point of comparison how he looks to the original Cheetor. But from what I can see, my, my first impressions on this figure, they're pretty good. He really has no hollow points or hollow areas to speak of, except for right here, and this is due to transformation. This is where his feet will, his robot feet will tuck in. So yeah, overall, from a detail standpoint, pretty good figure. Can't complain too much about that. Now we'll talk about the articulation. So he's got a couple of unusual points of articulation here, uh, particularly the, 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 the head. Well, 
in general, just the proportions, and I'll talk about this in a moment, is just the proportions of the figure are a little off. It makes posing a little different for him than it than a, for other figures. But so for the head, you do get good up. You get no down. You don't get side to side. And when you turn him, you are limited on either side before he interferes, unless you lift him up and then you do the turn. But th again, this is gonna be for the transformation. So you can get a full 360 out of the head, but that's mostly due to the transformation. For the shoulders, you do get a butterfly joint right here. So you can bring those arms forward, that aids in posability. And also for the fact that you have these cheetah chest wing things on the back, um, you can use that butterfly joint, pull these back a little bit, bring the shoulders forward, which allows you to get that range of motion on the shoulders, which you do have a good range of motion. You can get way up, you can get way down. You do have 360 here, but it's a, uh, a complicated 360, for lack of a better term, uh, or complex 360, but you can't just go straight forward and back with them. You have to pull the arm out as you spin it to clear the tabs on the back. So you do have good range of motion, you just have to do a lot of maneuvering to get that arm and that shoulder position where you want to. You do get bicep rotation. You get right at just over, actually, excuse me, sorry, just over 90 degree bend. And then you do get a wrist swivel, again, due to transformation, but nice posability there. Get the arm out of the way. You get good waist rotation, pretty much posable wherever you want. For the hips, let's go ahead and get the arms out of the way here. For the hips, you can come on out. He gets, depending on where you have the legs twisted. So for the thigh twist, if you play with that and move it around a little bit, you can get just over the full Van Dam. And then same thing here, because of the cutouts that you have right here, legs can come forward that far and then they can come back normally only right there. But if you swing the hip out and you clear this cutout right here, you can bring that hip back essentially a full 360. So if for some reason you wanted to, you could bring that leg all the way back around, but you have to spread him out that far in order to do it. So if you have his legs like this, you're not gonna get very far back here. You're only gonna, you're gonna be limited in your movement. All right, it does have thigh swivel. has just under 90 degrees on the knee. So his movement's a little limited there. And then with these tiny little feet, due to transformation mostly, you get a good amount of back and forth. And of course, you get your ankle tiltage. You do not get any side to side, so you can't twist the feet. So overall, he has a good range of motion. It's just an unusual particularly with the shoulders because of this, these, uh, I call them the chest wings. Because of the chest wings, you gotta maneuver some things to get them out of the way in order to get that full posability out of him. But overall, good, good decent amount of posability on this guy. Set him back down. One thing that I will say is that he does have nice tight joints. I don't know if that'll be the, the same way with your copy, but on this copy, his joints are nice and tight. You know, even for the feet, the size that they are, they're pretty posable. Uh, or or they, they, they stay in place, I should say, pretty well. So let's go ahead and get down to transformation on this guy, and then we'll get out of transformation and get to the comparisons. Transformation on this guy is pretty easy. You know, there's not a whole lot to him. So take the head, lift that head up, as we were talking about earlier. Spin that head around. And then you're just gonna put it so it's backwards, like that, so he's looking behind him. 
he has, just get these arms out of the way for now. So right here you have on his abs, these little areas that you're gonna want to grab and flip out. And then you can disconnect the head. So you see there, and we, we'll see it when we go back to robot mode as well. You're just gonna connect right there up into his upper jaw. So you disconnect that and then bring this up on the double hinge and swing it back. And then you have the head and the neck all taken care of there. So next step is you wanna bring these arms back down as such. You're gonna turn the wrists around So they look approximately like that, all right? And then you're going to push these arms back at the elbow, and you're gonna line this up right here. Same thing over here, push them back, and give them a little twist. Let's see if I can focus on that. So you do have this little tab and hook assembly right there. So you line those up. You should have something that's starting to look like that. And you're gonna take the chest wings and bring those together. And you will see as you're bringing these together that all this is gonna line up and you have tab, tab, tab. And you're gonna to wanna to push all this together So you have something that looks like that. And you can just move the arms, front legs, excuse me, up out of the way. Bring these back down on both sides. So you have the abdomen. Now we'll come back here and we'll start taking a look at the, the back legs. Take the cheetah legs and pull those out a little bit. And that's gonna open the spot up right here for the foot. You push that foot in till you feel the click. Do the same thing on the other side, pull that leg out, push this foot in till you feel the little click. And then bring these down. I say bring these down. I'm getting there. bring in the tail so same thing you've got peg slot or hole you put the tail in there and then bring these back up so you what you essentially what you had done was get those down out of the way so you could get the tail tabbed in bring them back up so they're flush and then you can tilt the legs down and then you for the the lower legs you will push those back until they hit a hard stop tilt up the paws and then we just clean everything up make it look the way we want it to and there you have it you have Cheetor in his alt mode. And overall, for a robot that turns into an animal, it's not a bad look. Bring him in for some details. So again, we saw this head sculpt. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is, oh goodness, his jaw is still unhinged. I need to put his jaw up. There you go, now you look a little better. So that head sculpt looks pretty good. Again, good paint apps on this guy with all the dots and everything. I'd say he's a, for his price point, he's about as convincing as a robot can get to become a cheetah. So overall, not too bad. There he is from the side. Other side top 
bottom. He does have visible fist syndrome down there, but overall, not too shabby. Now, he, he does have these, these are the, of course, his, his feet in robot mode sticking out, which I, they're not too obtrusive, especially if you're going to display him and have him maybe sitting something like that. You know, it's not going to be noticeable. Uh, obviously, he's not perfect, but overall, not a bad looking uh, alt mode for the Beast Wars. And I'm sure those of you out there who are Beast Wars fans, you're going to know a lot more than I do on this as how he as to how he compares to the G1. My opinion on this is, hey, it, it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and get him changed back. We'll do those comparisons and then we'll let you guys get out of here and get on with your day. So bring the legs down. Excuse me, sorry. Bring the legs out and down. Pull the tail off. And then straighten those legs out right there. And then as you bring these up, you will pull these feet out, get them out of the way, and that'll open that hole right there. So then you can just collapse the cheetah legs, bring the feet out. Same thing on the other side. Start bringing this up a little bit. Pull the robot feet out, collapse the cheetah legs, and his legs are all done. Pretty easy. Then what we'll do for the front cheetah legs, make him look like he's nice and streamlined there. You just grab the arms, grab right here in the seam, and start pulling this apart. Open the chest cavity. And then, of course, you have the arms visible there. You can just turn those, clean that up, make them look how you want. All right, now for the head, open this jaw all the way. You see that slot in there, you see this tab right here. I'm going to grab the head, clear the robot head. This is on a double hinge. So bring that down and collapse it. And then pop that in until you hear the click. For the robot head, twist that around, set it down. And now we're in cleanup mode. So you just position the arms how you want. Come back here, straighten those paws out, and bring these in. Try to make this look as compact as you possibly can. All right, so it should look approximately like that in the back and like this in the front. And then we can give him his weapon, the old tail whip. And there you have it. Now, before I bring in the comparisons, we'll talk about the effects. Uh, from what I can tell, the only compatible ports that he has are his hands and at the bottoms of his feet. So there's not a whole lot of effects usage here i mean i guess you could have him blasting off and you could have a flying cheetah if that's what you wanted uh there's not a whole lot that you can do here i haven't really played with the tip of this very much i'm not sure if it would accept the female end inside the this effect part and i don't think it will i think it's oversized no no i was wrong you can you can get a female effect on there if you want and I suppose you could probably you know if you felt like it you could do something like that so make that what you will 
So let me rephrase, not a lot of practical effects usage on this guy. I guess you could do some strange stuff with him. Oh, I forgot another part of that transformation. I've done this every time now. You have these sections right here. You need to collapse these in. That completes his abdomen area. So, sorry about that. There. Now, now, he's all transformed up. Okay. Let's move on to the comparisons. What I'm going to do, as I've stated before, I, I don't have any original Beast War figures. So, the closest that I'm going to be able to do is bring in an old G1 Predacon and since he's a simple transformation first I'll bring him in in his alt mode I, I should have brought him in while Cheetor was a cheetah but regardless so there he is in his alt mode let's get him transformed up real quick there's nothing to this guy I'm gonna, I guess I'll do it on camera here real quick that way you're not just hearing a bunch of clicking in the background the one nice thing about the G1 figures there's a lot of die cast on these guys. So, die cast, ratchet joints. So, they did put up with a lot of my abuse as a child. I will say that for sure. down in this groove to get this fist out. I think I'm going to skip that for now because I just can't. There we go. Just when I was about to give up, I finally get it. All right, there we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give the edge to Cheetor here as far as articulation. You know, I mean, it's modern engineering, right? This is, you know, 35 your old engineering so of course he's gonna have the edge all right let's get him out of there what we'll do is we'll bring in his kingdom compatriots what I have in the collection so far so we'll start with the little guy we'll bring in rat trap who is a core class I'll give you a point of comparison there so rat traps not really uh, not really gonna give him put up much of a fight against Cheetor All right, move him up out of the way. We will bring in Mr. Warpath. Let's bring in Optimus Primal. That's a pretty good look right there. Bring in Cyclonus. Again, I say it every time, if you can only get one figure out of the kingdom line, get him. And let's bring in Megatron. That looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That's a cool look. So, comparisons out of the way. Let's get everybody from the kingdom family Get them back in the shot with Mr. Cheetor. We'll do some final thoughts on this and we'll wrap it up. So let's center Cheetor up here. We'll just leave Megs where he was since he's a big guy. Bring in Cyclonus. Put him in the back since he's a big guy. Get Primal. We'll get Mr. Warpath. Bang, zow, boom. And we'll bring in Little Rat Trap and put him right here in the front. So yeah, there's the family so far. Overall, as a unit, it looks pretty cool. So this is, a, this is a neat thing that Hasbro has going on here where they're integrating the, the Kingdom, or the, the Beast Wars into the Kingdom line. Now, for my final verdict, I will say this. In comparison to the other figures, I think Cheetor lacks something. 
Uh, his articulation is not my favorite. I'm going to move Rat Trap out of the way because I want to bring Cheetor forward a little bit here. His articulation is not my favorite. I think it limits the posability. I think his robot mode is kind of weak. As I mentioned earlier, I think this profile, if you look at him from the side, it's just a, it's an odd profile. Again, this is me not knowing what the original Beast Wars Cheetor looked like in robot mode, or, or at least having him in hand to see what he looked like. It's just an odd profile. Uh, I, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this guy. The line itself, the, the Beast Wars line within Kingdom is starting to grow on me. I think he's probably the weakest figure. I, I Honestly, I think Rat Trap is leaps and bounds ahead of Cheetor for half the price. This guy has a lot more fun and a lot more playability in him than Cheetor does for me. Now, his ammo mode, it looks good. But I think uh, a tail whip as an accessory, his lack of effects compatibility, the limited posability, I don't know. If I had it to do over again and if I wasn't going to make this review, I probably would have skipped out on Cheetor. Now, Again, that's just my opinion. That doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong. Everyone has their own. It's what makes the world go round. This is just my take on it. So, all that being said, if you have a soft spot for Beast Wars, if you're a completionist, then you're going to want to pick this guy up. If not, he may be worth skipping. I, I don't think he's all that exciting. Most people that I know are not going to display their their transformers in the alt mode most of the time people have them on their shelves in the robot mode now <clears throat> excuse me barney back here is an exception at least for me i think his his dinosaur mode looks so much better than his robot mode i mean how could you not want to have that on the shelf right so in closing for me i would say this is a pass if you can get him on clearance get him on a good deal less than retail then sure add him to your collection but i i would have to pass on this if i did it again and i certainly wouldn't be paying more than retail all right guys that's it i thank you for tuning in again you know if you can leave us some comments let us know what we can be doing better on this page i say it in every review i'm going to say it again i don't do this because i'm trying to make money i do this because i love transformers i love getting the the word out on these guys hopefully this review any of these reviews will bring somebody else into the fold you know get us another collector going get us an, another lover of transformers maybe have the next generation of engineers get inspired by these guys so we get even cooler figures and with, with better transformations and more articulation and we just keep the progression going so we go from this to this, all of this. So much fun. So, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, you guys take care out there. Talk soon.